Hi there, in this quick uh, video we're going to take a look at three key areas of financial regulation in the UK. There's been a, a wholesale reform of financial regulation in Britain, particularly since the global financial crisis in 2007-2008. In terms of the UK context, there are four main authorities to think about. The Bank of England's Financial Policy Committee, the Prudential Regulation Authority and the Financial Conduct Authority. They are specifically geared to financial markets. Slightly wider remit is given to the Competition and Markets Authority. And if we think outside the UK, uh, financial regulation could also involve organisations such as the IMF and the World Bank. Our focus in this revision video is going to be on the first three. Quite important to make a distinction between micro and macro prudential policies. So prudential just basically means oversight and safety, trying to be cautious in terms of how the financial system works. And in particular, since the global financial crisis, regulators have placed a lot of emphasis on prudential regulation. In other words, putting in place sufficient safeguards for the overall stability of the financial system. So what's the difference between the two? Micro prudential involves the regulation of individual financial businesses. That includes uh, commercial banks, that includes payday lenders, that includes hedge funds, insurance companies and pension funds. So that's regulation of individual businesses and their activities. Whereas macro prudential is essentially designed to regulate the financial system as a whole, in particular to mitigate some of the domestic and external risk factors that might be affecting the stability in the financial system and crucially people's trust and confidence in finance, which is such an important aspect. So we're going to look very quickly at three main organisations that you need to be aware of for your A-level exams. First of all, the Financial Policy Committee of the Bank of England. So the FPC operates within the bank, within the UK Central Bank. Their main role is to identify, to monitor and, crucially, to take action to remove or lower systemic risk. Systemic risk is where uh, an isolated, but oftentimes a localised factor, could have a much wider consequence on the financial system. So they're basically trying to um, reduce the systemic risk that could cause domino effects and, and uh, challenge these, the stability of the financial system as a whole. Uh, they publish a financial stability report available on the Bank of England's website, and that looks at all the key threats to the stability of the banking system. So it could be domestic risks, for example, the risk of a severe fall in house prices. It could be external risks, the risks of uh, fragility in the European banking system perhaps consider the impact on UK banks of uh, financial crisis in China, uh, thinking about how banks might cope with exchange rate volatility, uh, the consequences the, for the UK, for example, of, of the Brexit vote and subsequent negotiations. So their job is to have a sort of system-wide overview. They have the power to instruct the commercial banks, such as Lloyd's and RBS and Barclays, what have you, to change their capital reserves, the amount of capital they have to hold. Uh, in order to maintain stability. And in particular, when the FPC decides they think the risks to the financial system are, are getting bigger, they may well tell the commercial banks, including the main high street banks, uh, and other lenders, including specialist mortgage lenders, to increase their capital reserves. That means that they have more reserves, it's like a buffer stock, and if they make unexpected losses on their assets, if there's been an increase in bad debts, sometimes called non-performing loans, and the banks will be able to absorb those losses without threatening their own survival and the wider risks in particular for depositors, people with savings. So these reserves, these capital reserves, are part of macro prudential policy. The banking system holds capital reserves in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the context of trying to protect the safety of the system as a whole. Prudent, of course, means being careful at times of uncertainty, and uncertainty in many cases is now the new normal. So that's the Financial Policy Committee. The Prudential Regulation Authority, or the PRA, again is part of the Bank of England. And essentially this is part of, um, they look at the Prudential Regulation and Supervision of Stability of, of Commercial Banks, of Building Societies, of Credit Unions, of Insurers, of Major Investment Firms. So basically they look at specific financial markets and make sure that they're working uh, ideally optimally insurance companies for example are they are they uh, do they have sufficient reserves in times of crisis 
specialist terms such as the buy to let mortgage lenders, people who are lending money to, uh, uh, to, to people who want to buy a house and then rent it out, a specialist part of the, of the housing market. Credit unions, oftentimes smaller lenders are organised at local levels. And other specialist lenders that might have a particular specialist approach to, for example, lending to businesses. So that's the job of the Prudential Regulation Authority, the, the PRA. They look at individual firms, individual markets. The Financial Conduct Authority is the FCA. Now that replaced the Financial Services Authority, the technical detail, but crucially, it reports to the Treasury rather than the Bank of England. And it's funded entirely by the firms it regulates, which in, in principle creates uh, perhaps uh, a conflict of interest there. They have three main objectives. One is to protect consumers from um, uncompetitive behaviour. So a couple of really good examples that you may have come across in the news. Uh, banks have been having to pay out more billions of pounds in compensation for the mis-selling of PPI, Payment Protection Insurance, on financial products. Uh, just recently, in 2015, the FCA imposed a cap on the interest that can be charged to people by the payday lending businesses. I think they imposed a cap of 0.8% per day on interest, which sounds still pretty high. But crucially, the interest, the total interest on a payday loan, could not be more than 100% of the total value of the loan. So that happened a couple of years ago. It's really quite important intervention in the, the high interest unsecured sort of um, doorstep lending industry, the payday loans associated with businesses, for example, such as Wonga. So protection for consumers is important. Crucially, again, they have a wider remit. So they want to protect the integrity of the financial system, including a labour market aspect, including authorisation of people who work in the industry. So people can be, can be struck off uh, FCA um, registers of people who have licenses to, to work in pensions and uh, other financial services. But crucially, uh, they're trying to promote effective competition, for example, in the banking sector. Um, so you will have come across perhaps in your work on financial economics the allegations of interest rate rigging with LIBOR, the London Interbank Offer Rate. Lots of fines there have been imposed. And generally, the FCA is trying to make the commercial banking market more competitive, in part by deregulating the industry, but in particularly trying to encourage so-called challenger banks to come into the sector. Challenger banks, for example, Metro Bank and, uh, and one or two others. So competition is an important part of their remit. And they're also trying to encourage, for example, um, to make it easier for customers to switch their current accounts by, by giving customers a unique customer reference number. So it makes it easier to swap uh, your bank account if you think you're getting a good service or you think you can get a better rate of interest elsewhere. So the Financial Conduct Authority has quite a significant amount of power, uh, particularly in sort of protecting consumers, maintaining the stability and integrity of the system and trying to promote more competition or more, more contestability into what is essentially an oligopolistic banking sector. That's a quick overview on financial regulation as we stand in the UK.